evening, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to you live from Elizabeth, Indiana, in the AccuStats Arena here at Caesars, Southern Indiana, it's the 2022 Derby City Classic and all-around pocket billiards championships. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. This one pocket division started out with 457 players. We are now dwindling down to our three finalists of only one has a rebuy. Without further ado, let's introduce two of those three competitors to you right now. First up to my left. Coming to us from Columbia, South Carolina, it's the two-time Space City Open champion, sponsored by Lomax Q's and Hustlin' USA Clothing, as well as Enviro, Enviro Assessments, it's the beast, Josh Roberts. And his opponent, coming to us from the UK, four-time major champion, BCA Hall of Famer, sponsored by Predator, Rest on Tables, and Q World, it's Dynamite, Darren Appleton. <laughs> Players, if you can approach the table to lag for first break. Up next, we have High Drama One Pocket, played with maximum intensity, Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones from high atop the AccuStat Arena. Glad to have you here, Jeremy. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Happy to be here, and should have one heck of a match here between Josh Roberts and uh, Daz Darren Appleton. Josh won the lag, so that's huge in this race to three. Any race, uh, tournament style, One Pocket. And of course, rotation or any other game, usually the breaks, the first breaks pretty, pretty big. And Josh has played really well here in 2022, and it seems like, you know, every minute that Darren stays on the table, he's improving as well. Doesn't matter what game either. Most are a little surprised by Darren's, you know, last to be undefeated out of, you know, 400 players or whatever the, you know, big number was, but. You know, he lived several years in Philly area and played some big matches, uh, one pocket. So he's not going to get up there and do that without having a, a clue or, or a good feeling about what's going on or, and or spend some time doing it. And we both noted in the 10-ball tournament how good he was playing and it was great to see him kind of be resurgent and the Darren Appleton of old. Yeah, and you might say the banks, but, I mean, probably if you ask Darren the one thing he – he feels like he needs to catch up on more than anything maybe at times is banking the ball, and he'll tell you that as well. Josh used to say the same thing. He's come a long ways, though. And, and one thing about Darren is, you know, great eight-ball player, right? So he's a very witty player. He understands uh, mm -hmm. uh, things, and he understands, you know, clusters and predicting what his opponent may do or, you know, just things like that. So one pocket probably suits him. Just like right there, pretty heady shot, getting a couple balls up table on his side. And that's so important early because, you, you know, you're cutting off the end rail for Josh, you know, as far as options. All right, he's got to make sure it grabs. See how it slides? Yes. Yeah. Outer table, that's fine. Inner table, not so good. Yeah, I mean, you know, tournament race to three, you could say this is a pick em. Um Kind of commented. Maybe to you, maybe to somebody else that I felt like on the slick table, you may give Darren a little edge, even though Darren just came even right here. This ball spread a little bit more maybe than he wanted, but nice shot. But on the outer table, you might give a little edge to Josh. So we can definitely say that in his career, Darren has spent more time on this, you know, slicker tables, at least the TV setting. Okay, I, I never liked this shot when I'm close to it, Mark, edge in the bottom of the one. Yeah. And, and a couple things, you know, it's a difficult cueing, and you're knocking a ball away from your pocket a little bit. So I would rather take a foul here early in the stack, dislodge that six ball maybe that looks like it's pointed towards. This is a nice shot, but do you see what's happening there? Balls are going right. away, away from his pocket, and that's what you want to do uh, or you want your opponent to do if you're daring. I would have made Darren kick maybe a couple times. <laughs> what a nice hit. Yeah, he's going to be 0 and 1, though. Let's 
Good. I, mean, I, st I think I still kick on the six here, just mildly. You got to be careful of the three popping out. Well, Josh is a tough hombre on one pocket, so. Oh, yeah. Plays everything good, and now he's got a few years of good seasoning playing at a high level. Just got to be careful here. Again, the right spin won't take to come upward into the stack just like it won't kill. You know what I mean? Just like right well, there. there it was. Good call, Jeremy. You I called it. Yeah, and it's just he got more of a kiss, and you got to realize what you're protecting. Outer like, table action, that works. Inner table and doesn't work. Yeah, and this uh, this is touchy little shot right here because that 10 ball. Okay. Now, Josh has got a couple of choices here. The one I like, if queuing is okay, is bank the 10 straight up coming to this side rail here, this long rail, and let the cue ball go one rail underneath the one. You're banking the 10 up a little bit, which is actually a good thing. And you run the cue ball to the side rail below the 12 and then one rail over below the one. And you don't have to get that crazy good underneath the one, really. You just got to get it decent. This would be my last choice, I, I, I think. I would rather kick at the bottom of the one than do this. Unless he gets that ball really close or past the cue ball. Great effort, but that's how tough it was. Can he possibly push the 14 over? I don't know. Can he get in there? Mark, that looks tight with the five. Yeah, I think he's wedged up. And, uh, well, it's pretty freed up if you look at the table now. You can see the cue ball. I think he can get at the 14, but it's a touchy shot. So, again, I would just soft kick at the one. Looks like he's <laughs> wanting to double him up here. And the thing is, when you talk about doubling a person up, meaning going up in the corner behind the two, um, it's decent. And I guess he can get on the 13 doing that, so it's not as bad as it looks. But you want a lot of balls to shoot at, you know what I mean, if, you're yeah. gonna, if you make it, right? Yeah. You don't want to get stuck up there, and now you're shooting at a real tough shot from way downtown, and the guy's got the one ball right next to his pocket. So it's kind of like you got to ask yourself, what are you doing with the shot? Are you really trying to make it, hang it? Right. Because I've done that plenty of times and made that bank and really put myself in a terrible position of the table with my opponent having a ball close to the hole. So I'll keep it pretty simple here, feather the 10. You can come back, back on the three if you want. I probably, eh, I probably would actually. This is another one. You're really getting to one bare ball here, and you're trying to squeeze between the between the five and one with the cue ball. Yeah, see, light with the cue ball. Got to get lucky. And the and my point of the story is, you're not getting any more balls. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. I mean, you might trap him, I guess, but these guys kick at the ball real well. They do things to get out of the traps, and if you're taking a risk with the cue ball right there. You want to be getting a lot of balls. You like to go forward and bank. Yeah. Allows him to go down table now safely. Very safely. He can go all the way to the 13 maybe if it, if it goes. He doesn't have quite as much angle. He'd have to stun it a bit more to go to the 13. If he just wanted to go to the 11, he could just use a high ball, which is probably the best shot because the a bank is pretty much a hanger with a high ball. Great speed. He yeah. should be able to hold it. Good control. Yeah, and one thing, if I was in Josh's corner, I'd say, hey, let's batten it down, get a little feel for the table. You know, I, I know he played uh, – who did he play here Jay, er, uh, earlier? Was it Shaw? Yeah, Shaw, Yeah, I think. Shaw. Okay, I don't think he gets too aggressive here. As far as with the cue ball, and he'd love to have been, had a little less angle. He could come across maybe and then bunt the 10 over and stick him on the stack. 
He might be able to double bank the five. It's a possibility. Now he's decided, do I come back? I think he's supposed to come back with the cue ball. I think the nine in the pocket is playing nice enough to come backwards and get behind the 13 off of two rails. Caught it just a little rough. Yeah, it cost him a foot of cue ball at least, huh, Mark? Probably, but he can eliminate the 10 ball here and just pin the cue ball to the seven. Yeah, and the thing is, make sure you get a little draw, but you can go into the balls if you want to slow the cue ball down. You don't have to like, oh, he let the 15 come out. Better hope that goes. Okay, and the fifth, that got in the way of the bank. <clears throat> well, the ball's going to spot, so maybe Darren realized that, that he had maybe even more of a cushion with the cue ball. Pretty witty. Ed Ladawa spotting the ball there. You know, most with two real kick at the bottom of the 10. It's only 3 0, no time to like. Uh, I mean, you could shave the seven and go down below. Oh, you hit the 15, that's fine. Yeah, and he might not have been able to even get to the bottom of the 10. Uh, Darren's got to be careful here with the five ball. Looks to me he can he clips the seven or, or the, what's the ball that's attached to the eight, that stripe there? Wants to be a little careful of a bank with uh, even sticking him in the stack and holding for the four, that being Josh. Might keep it real simple here. Either chip the top side of the ten. That's not a shot you want to shoot that often. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd rather just leave that ball there and be effective with the cue ball. But you got to be careful because guys will go for these banks a little more often on the TV table. Yeah, okay. Did pretty well. 14 does go. You'd have to taste, take some <laughs> some risk with the six ball, but he could get shaped, though. That's the thing that I see. Now, the thing that Josh has got to realize is only three to zero. So not, not a real big lead. He's looking at the kiss shot on the four. Coming off the five, maybe. Maybe just straight into the four. I'll tell you what. If, he, if it looks pretty good and he can play it off the five with the cue ball, I think he's got a chance to move the 14 over. He's got a chance to cut the five on the eight. The seven might trickle off that stripe. I can't tell the angle on those balls right there, but I like that better than the bank if it's got a chance to go myself. Well, I just feel like you're betting the game on it then. Yeah, but I mean, k dead kiss shots are dead. I mean, you if gotta, it's if yeah. it is in fact that he's good. firing this. Yeah, that was that's the problem. Right there. Oh, you got lucky. But kind of, yeah. Maybe. Looks like that fourteen might bank. It's hard to tell from our overhead position. That fourteen bank, so he probably yeah. didn't get lucky. But he's jacked up. I mean, it's not like he can really work the cue ball for shape. So again, are you betting yeah. the game on it? Yeah, that's right. Now, the one thing he could do is if he really liked it and he could stop his ball, the 10-6, 6-10 combo is not that hard of a combo if you could hold your ball. you got to cut it a ways, but it's not terrible. I'll tell you a good shot, Mark. Mm -hmm. If you could bank it in and hold your ball, you could you shoot the double kiss jersey red shot on the four. <laughs> it's laying about perfect if you could hold the cue uh -huh. ball right there. Uh, to me, well, you can't tell from here, but it looks like he's 14's got him. Yeah, the angle's too – oh, yeah, he can't see the four right now. He'd oh, have okay. to bank the 14 first. It looks oh. like, to me, he's in trouble. Looks like, to me, the 14 is really off angle. Yeah. He's going off the seven just over to the rail, looks like. That's a really nice shot. That is. That's a good decision. Yeah. Bide your time. One more shot. It's probably going to get a little bit better. 
Now Josh needs to edge that 14 going below the four here. Oh, he's kicking this, and then, well, this is a decision that, okay, normally you're going to bank the 10, and this is pretty good long right here. And again, the table, I think, just not quite used to it. And now maybe Darren can get behind that four with the cue ball, which is really kind of right. deadly for Josh. Josh only has a couple balls on his side, and he really need you know, kind of use those. He's just going to move it, and I'm assuming move the cue ball up the rail with it. Going to have to. You can't leave it there. Yeah, but the 10 is froze, so it's a hard one to bank at. I mean, you got to really like it to bank this 10. He did a good job as far as getting the cue ball on the rail. Yeah, now the one thing is it's going into the 6 pretty decent. You should be able to hold your ball, but I still think you, you're not making it very often. I think Josh thinks he's making it, but uh, you're right. Double kiss time. Yeah, was, that was a toughie. And like I said, he's just got to batten down the hatches a little bit, you know, get into the game a little more. Now, he may have gotten fortunate here where Darren can't really move the cue ball a ton here unless he really wants to put some speed in, into this bank. And that makes the bank play so treacherous at that point. You can yeah. lose trying to. Yeah, and, you know, be honest with you, so far, Josh is telling him he doesn't really have to go for much, right? I mean, just yeah. like, try to make this, make a little maneuver, and see what happens. Well, that's good for Josh right there. That Obviously, that's a, a good that he gets to make it for him and let Darren come out of the pocket here. Darren might not be able to move balls away too well. Four nothing. Oh, negative one, excuse me. So nothing really banks for Josh. So just be careful of a long railer of some sort, like the 15. Like if you're going to follow through on the five. I don't mind the soft kick on the 15 if you feel very comfortable you're not going to scratch. You know, just make sure. Mm -hmm. you know, just just right. hit it full and hit it light and. Now, if you have any doubt, don't shoot it. But otherwise, this is a pretty doable shot. That, that's fine as well. I think he felt more comfortable for yeah, sure. Yeah, no this risk, way. no risk. Maybe even better, really. Hey, well, and like you said, uh, Josh is not really forcing the issue right now, so you probably going to come out with another good shot here. Is there no kiss shot on the 12 here? No, there's got to be. high right? I mean, it looks it, like it. I mean, yeah. it, I'll tell you what, I hate to leave Efren that. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I mean, because a three doesn't have to go very far. You can actually spin off the end rail and get mm -hmm. shape on the three or the seven, eight. Yeah. I mean, I would have had to look at that one. And I like those shots anyways, kind of, but. Okay, he didn't protect the 15. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I probably take my lead here, yeah, and move these balls. These are both going back to Darren's side. Well, he hit it kind of light. Darren probably comes back. He's probably willing to take this lead right here at 4 0. Now, if balls double up over there, he's got to be careful leaving a little angle on the 15. It's not bad here, but you know, you never know. Balls could double up, and Josh could get a bank to where he feels good about going behind the 13 and all that, right? Yeah. So if you go over that side rail, just pay attention. Now the four's in the way, so it's not a big deal. Josh will play off the seven. Now 
That's what I, and I was about to say. Normally when you shoot that shot right there, you want to push through a little further because long rail banks develop sometimes like that four almost developed right there. So just push through on the cue ball a little further. The cue ball gets on top of them balls real hard to, for a bank to be there. Well, Fetter Gorse looking good in the all around. Boy, you're not kidding. <laughs> I mean, Jason made a run too here, so he's got to definitely be considered. I mean, he, it's him and Fetter right now. Yeah, if somehow Gorst wins this tournament, then he's invincible for the all-around, right? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. Two wins. If Jason wins the nine ball, two wins, that would be. I almost made a big mistake right there. He almost pocketed the four ball. That would have came on the spot and left Josh straight in. But, um, I mean, we're only in the second round of the nine ball, right? So right. I would have to say I don't know if he's. You know, of course, wins right here. He'll have a, he'll be in a great spot. But if Shaw wins the nine ball, I gotta believe he's still got a chance, depending on Gorse's outcome there. Because I don't know if it's still the case, but I think the nine ball used to carry more points because it was worth more money. So. Yeah, irregard or regardless how that comes out, Gorst is in a great position anyway. No yeah, he's a you know third here at least, and then he's probably with his nine ball game. Of course, he's you know just at least third here, and and going to make some kind of a you know he's noise a, in the nine ball. Well, I guess it doesn't have to happen. But you would think though. Yeah. So I would say probably two to one favorite on the field on at least on the all around yeah at this point could lessen a little bit if he goes on to win this maybe the seven to five six to five probably more actually i don't know yeah more like four to one on the field <laughs> okay i don't know what he's doing here i don't think he's doing much And the reason why he's going off this ball is just to keep that bank on the three available. Darren's trying to guard the seven? A little bit. Uh -huh. I mean... He's willing to play with that one ball bank uh, when, you know, especially if he leaves them on the rail shooting it. It's not like it fr totally free. Could give up more balls. The cue ball coming back down. Does he have a two railer on the four? Yeah, this table it? here with a high right. You actually hit this. A lot of people try to throw this, right? High inside is the way to shoot this and cut it a little bit. You can make it throwing it, but uh, oh. he did great with the cue ball. Boy, didn't he? <laughs> Landed fully. To, uh, put a little pressure on Josh here. He can't just be passive on this response. No, but, I mean, hard for Darren to really hook him again, right? So get underneath the four, and if Darren snookers you again, you just keep on doing what you're doing to get out of it, so... Could take a stab at the long rail kick on the five. I've seen a lot of great players uh, do that. Now the seven's kind of in play. If the seven wasn't in play, it might be different. Uh -huh. Can he bank the five? Oh, no, he's just going to play it lightly, going towards the three with the cue ball. All right, he's got to be careful now. See, the balls are doubled up. So now what about the long roller on the 14? The two roller on the three is what I would look at first if I was Josh. Uh-huh. He just kind of saw the long railer quickly, and he, he knows he can put him in a kind of a trapping position. And I was a little surprised, you know, 
Darren's got to realize he's got a pretty big lead. He may have left the gap here. I, well, I think he can even shoot the six ball on the four safely. Yeah. Yeah, Josh, nothing wrong with what Josh did. Nothing wrong if he wanted to shoot the three, but he needed to really look and see where he had to get the cue ball because those balls are doubled up a lot for Josh as well. So he'll come back on the three ball here and good chance to hang one, if not make it. Yeah. <laughs> and now he wish he hadn't played such a good safety. <laughs> yeah, he didn't figure to get underneath, I don't think. Uh, he can come right at the 15 here, lightly. Oh, boy, devastating. And he's gotten him elevated as well. That particular shot's been outlawed in many states. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they used to say in pro wrestling about the, the pile driver where a guy jams his head into the mat. Yeah, I used to go when I was a kid in Houston <laughs> to was it Southwest Wrestling, I think. Can he get at the two? If he can get at the two, uh, he's got action. Even if it goes into the 12, if he can bury the cue ball, he's going to bring more balls down. Uh, he got a little light with the cue ball. He may have gotten a little fortunate here. Does he play the rail first? The six is a long ways out. It is, yeah. He can two rail the three as well and hold the ball. Now, this is where you don't plan them, Mark. This is where you leave the ball on the rail if you're going to shoot it. He's going to shoot the 15. Now, the problem Stick is. Stick it on the 13. And that's good. But he's still got balls doubled up. So, this looks real good, though. <laughs> it certainly does. It's now going to be hanging. <laughs> and Josh is in the world of hurt here. That was a real good shot. Really effective. Yeah, he's going to. He's got a 12-14 that is doubled up on his side. So if he takes a foul here, Darren doesn't have to. Darren can really just he mm -hmm. can he can shoot away somewhere. All right. So I probably like this if he can keep him off this first shot. I like opening the cue ball up if I can. That puts a little pressure on Darren at least. Now he may just bank the five over to his side. You know he doesn't have to do much. You know why? Because the 14 is a hard one to cover. So if Josh was to make the 15 somehow, where do you go with the cue ball? Yeah. Real first, he's got. He can just, and, and then he can just. This is, oh, this I see what you're yeah, saying. It's too hard to pass up with the 15 hanging. He's Don't got, blame him. Yeah, he's just got too many ways he can hit the 15. And he's, he evaluates as well as anyone. Playing for two. And this was on Josh's break, or? Yeah, I believe so. I would probably come out for the for shape instead of the bank myself. Yeah. I think too many, right? You got the two and the seven, really hard to overrun. Well played by Appleton. Maybe just a little bit loose by Josh Roberts. Good game nonetheless. 1-0 is Appleton's lead. I'd say you called it right there, a little loose. You know, not crazy, but just a few, a few little shots, and that's all it takes. Maybe two times the spin didn't grab the way it does in the outer tables, and it cost him having the capacity to move the balls more advantageously. Good crowd here late at night. Yeah, and Darren and... Nothing better than winning that first game, and now it gets the breaks, the break the balls in game number two. He stuck with a pretty firm break. He did that when he was practicing. Didn't really get the cue ball up like he wanted, but mm -hmm. also balls were opening on Josh's side. That's always bad when that top ball goes the nine. Yeah. Normally, if you're breaking good, you know, well that that nine doesn't quite go for your opponent. That being Josh, so. Is Josh thinking about kicking at the 15? Yeah, if he can slide it over underneath the 11, he's got a lot of cover. 
Boy, he hit it good, too. Yeah, he got good it over job. there. Yeah, real good job. Now, if Darren can see a, at least, you know, a third of this, maybe to a half of the 15, he can bank this back underneath, maybe throw it into the eight, maybe. I don't know if he can see enough of it and draw the cue ball to the low rail mm -hmm. and up a little bit. Otherwise, it's probably shaved the five and coast over. That's not fun. Not on this table. <laughs> That's it's not a, a fun slick shot. table. Even yeah. if you get there, it's a boring shot. You know? That's oh. a better way through the ball. I didn't know you had that. And and also what you do is you're moving a a, a real dangerous ball in that five that banks to Josh's pocket. So you're you're, uh, mm -hmm. you're doing two things there. Uh, Josh doesn't want to give up the 15, so that's the top priority. Right on, I'd put him right on the 8 and 2. you got to start. Yeah, if you can lag it in there. Yeah, squeeze on him a little bit. Well, he's going conservative. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. I mean, he's essentially gotten out of the break, so. I don't think Darren can really make the 13 effectively, like off the 15, anything like that. I'm trying to see how he can really change the position of these balls and I just don't see it. This is another subtle one. Gotta watch out. May leave a free kick here. Like Josh can I think kick at the 13 here to make it. Uh, I know it sounds mm -hmm. sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. One rail but right. I, I think it's free. Shannon Dalton won, made one heck of a shot against Efren at the world tournament there in Galveston in the final. Similar. Woo! That's yeah. powerful. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a powerful shot. I like that better than the kick even, if you can get yeah, it in yeah. there. Now, if you feel good, you come off the seven here to open these and don't take the foul if you're feeling good about it. If you don't want to take any chances, yeah, you can just roam over. Now, don't get, leave the twist back on the 13. That looks like pretty good speed. Much better than going. If you go past it, he can twist the 13 back. Wasn't very productive though. Josh is going to get right into the back of the seven eleven here. You know, for a foul, you'd like to get something more done with a foul shot than. Yeah, he was trying to get back, but he he. If you go past it though, you know what I mean. Oh yeah. They'll, they'll oh, twist yeah. that bank back on you, and and it's a hard, terrible way to go down. Really, to be honest with you. Now he's got a kick, and that's another thing. You know. Now he's going to be on two fouls. That's too hard. That's going to give up the bank I was talking about. Now, the good thing for him, he jacked him up. So now Josh has got to make a real decision, Mark. Do I shoot at this? Going up table with the cue ball, obviously. Well, you got the big pocket. And so if you do choose to. Oh, yeah, you, you're right. The 15's you, there. You've, you've got to make it. This is going to be a game winner if I make it. You can't just try to play safe, too. This is all out to make the ball. Right, commit. Right, oh, he it, twisted it. it. Nice. It sweet. Wow. Okay. He hit it sweet. So I don't know if he can get it to 15 or not. It's close. Looks like he can. Huh. They get a bank. <laughs> uh, it looks a little. Usually, when you're close to it, you can kind of beat the kiss. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of he. I don't know if he can go back with English now. If the ten four isn't playable, the two isn't dead. You got to look at that two ball. He's looking at cutting the fourteen. I don't blame him. But normally, you can kind of like make it grab a little bit, and you can beat the kiss. So now he sees the two ball, so that's real alarming to him. But you can still make it stun kind of straight up into them balls a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. That would really be productive if he squared up on the two like this. Yeah. Oh, boy. What a shot that was. There you go. What a shot that was. Hey, he got it all done <laughs> right there. Opened everything up, tagged the two square, stopped the cue ball. Yeah, and that's that first bank I was talking about that's just, a, you know, mm -hmm. you feel sick going down, leaving that bank. Yeah. And I really think he should have entertained coming off the seven with yeah, the cue ball. Yeah, I agree. Ball. The shot before where you said if you're feeling good because he ended up not in any better predicament than what he was. He ended up taking a foul that wasn't that great. Yeah, he was on two fouls as well. 
when he sold this out. Oh, no, he did get the 15 to the rail, excuse me. And you want to do that. You want to come in behind the 7 and 11, so just no miss. Thing is, on the slick table, he doesn't feel like he can get it to grab. But now you can pull the ball right out off that 14, right where you're at right. now. You can even, with a slick table, you can even hit them heavier than normal. Exactly right. Out. And you can control the speed so much better doing so. But not any better than that right there, All right. Mark. All right, though. No, great shot there. Yeah, looks like Josh should tie this match. Playing for three. If you don't know the scenario, Feder and Josh, oh, he got to the rail here. Feder and Josh uh, both have a loss. Darren has no losses. Feder got the bye. So he's going to cut the 10, it looks like, to, to, yeah. to end this game. So if you want an easy way to figure it out, if Darren wins, we'll have two left. If Josh wins, we'll have three left again, and Feder can't get the bye, so he'll play in the next match no matter what. Either Josh or Darren will get the bye. So huge things happen in here in the one-pocket division. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of twists and turns available. Yeah, drama, right? Isn't that what they call it? Yep. High drama here at center court. Well, there you got a good look of how Josh Roberts got here. He made a lot of good decisions and support. It was good execution. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw Josh in Mobile, Alabama. And I think about it long enough here. I'll think of the year, but he played awfully well. Didn't know where he came from on a bar table tournament there, seven-footer. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm glad he started going this route. You know, whatever it was 15 years ago, playing all, trying to play better, you know, play with the better players and whatnot, he sure has the game. Here's our National Billiard Academy rack track. Split, they split the first two with Appleton winning the first. And that one was fought a little bit, even though, you know, it was a little convincing in the score line there. But Darren had turned some things around there yeah. for a moment, but. And a much tighter second game from Roberts than we saw in the first. Right. He really didn't have any wide open glaring errors in this one. Yeah, well, the break, I think, really set the tone with the kick shot there. Mm -hmm. No. And that's what's wrong with opening balls like those three that came open near Josh's pocket after the break. Um, you, you know, if, if there's no balls or one ball over there, if that kick shot, it's kind of bare a little bit. You know, that you don't have mm -hmm. a lot of cluster to really, you know, cause up some confusion and, and problems for Darren. So even if they go to the bottom rail a little bit and they're somewhat on, you know, your opponent's side, you really don't want those balls opening on the break. A little harder here on the slick table, I think, though. Now, see, he pulled it out a little more, I think. Well, that's where Alton broke from. Is it that yeah. far? Okay. Yeah, pretty far out. Okay, he didn't have as many come out towards that bottom rail, but he had three. But a little fortunate, he kind of caught the second point there with the cue ball, and it really killed it. I think he was heading to that same alley between the 12-14 that Darren had left in the last rack. This is touchy business right here. I mean, he can come off the 10 and put him behind the two, but these balls are open pretty decent. This one, he's got to play thin. He can't get the 10 on his side. I don't – oh, he can. So that's huge to get that ball somewhat over there. And you hate to open balls on your opponent's side, but going off the 8 with some left spin, I think you can get by the 12. Not sure what he's doing, though. I think he's doing that shot. Yeah, with some left spin. It, that's what I was wondering. Do I commit to just getting him on the 512, or do I think that English will take and get him on the 7? I was wondering about that. It's just hard to make it dive off that English. 
I think Darren should be aggressive here. The 5-7 and all that's got a lot of banks covered up. I, I guess maybe he can't kick to the bottom rail and kick and it, stick on the two. It, it's so hard to tell from here because on this screen, it looks yeah. like he's pinned up on the five. Yeah, well, no, I'm talking about can he get to the bottom rail between the 5-7. I thought he could maybe, but if not, he could swerve it pretty easily and, and kind of bump it out. He's going to give it to him. Put him huh. on 15. Nothing wrong with that. I don't know if he got there. I think he did. Can't let him see the 12, obviously. Josh is looking at that 12 big time. Well, even if uh, he has to curve it here, it's not terrible. I think he has the 12 straight on, though. Well, there's a small window between the 5-7. Yeah, it's a little long now. He should have maybe thought about getting the cue ball into the 4 right there if he was going to play that. You know, instead of like, mm -hmm. oh, am I really going to make it between this 5-7? Right, right. You know, you could play a little more aggressive and move balls over and go one rail into the stack with the cue ball. It's delicate, In, though, because if you right. hit the 8, you give up the 14. So let's see what he does here. Is he looking at shooting through the 14, maybe? All right, he's really got to get one over on his side here. Oh, wow. oh, golly. I like to hear. You've got to be kidding. I like to hear the comment after <laughs> Rob Darren's after that. <laughs> Something witty, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. I bet he's real happy about that. I avoid all those balls. It almost seems impossible from where he was at, doesn't it? What's he doing here? I'd really be convinced of what you're doing to mess with the 7 or the 11, any of that. I thought 14 ball would definitely be the shot one way or another. Whether you're sticking him, moving the cue ball, going to the rail. Yeah, he stuck him. I like that. High level one pocket is so much more entertaining than bad players trying to play one pocket. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but it's the greatest game because, you know, there are different ways to play it. and There's so many natural hits. Um, even if you're not the greatest player in the world, you can kind of learn to defend yourself a little bit. Now you're not going to be running eights and outs and all that and banks from everywhere. But, yeah, it's definitely more fun to watch these guys. Oh, it's entertaining the shots they come up with and execute and – and Darren's in a spot here. I might kick a cross between the 8 and 11. This is a sensitive spot here in a big match. Mm -hmm. You know, just lay over there and see if mm -hmm. he wants to come off the 8 and try and get me in the stack again or something that might open up, yeah. you know, a little bit of uh, opportunity. What's the score here in balls? 1-0 One zero One for zero. Yeah, that's nothing. And I think he's looking at that now where he's pointing his cue. Like, that's the place to one real kick over. And the one thing about the guys you may not label, um, you know, one-pocket specialists or real one-pocket players, maybe not their game, right? Mm hmm And when you talk about the guys that are great, very rarely do you, you know, come across the one that's not a bulldog and not going to figure out how to get the cue ball somewhere not to give you too much of a shot, even yeah. if they're not the one-pocket player. All right. And so just that alone is tough to beat, period. Now you see an occasional pro here and there get frustrated with it, and I understand that completely. But Like Darren, he, you know, he, he came this far not just because of his one-pocket knowledge. It's, he might be the – the ultimate bulldog out there. Yeah. Okay, kind of hard to spin off the eight and get there. You kind of got a stun off there, I think. I think if you spin it, you're risking a little bit because the seven does bank. See how he kind of stunned over there and kept it yes. simple? Very smart, in my opinion. Move that ball that was on Darren's side up the table a little bit. So I think that's a very effective shot. And the layout of the rest of the balls, the ones that are, you know, not right there at the stack or near the cue ball, you got to like Josh a little bit. I mean, he looks like he gets the first free kind of shot. Maybe not right here too soon, but. And now 
Well, the guys you say, well, why didn't he bank the seven over right there? Well, the thing is, without much on his side, you don't want to open that bank alley just yet. <laughs> Josh is going to be the one that gets to take advantage of that, and that's not what you want. Now, getting another ball over there on his side, that's, that's important. Again, I think I would take a foul if I was Josh into the stack. Mm-hmm. Because Darren can make a mistake kicking here. The 15 and the 3, right, are bankable balls. Like if that cue ball moved over a little bit, that 15 is bankable for Josh. And the 3 certainly is. So if you kick and take a foul, Darren's going to have to one row kick below the 15 again. He can make a real mistake doing that. I think this is dangerous with the 7. He could also push through on the one and go the side rail with the cue ball a little bit if he wanted. That's okay. I think he guarded. Now, is the 315 doubled up at all? Or do you think the three goes, Mark? Yeah, I think it goes. But okay. You know, once again, <laughs> it's tight from here. A little bit. Yeah, it's definitely distracting. Missable. All right, well, very light shot here of some sort. All right, he let him see the 14. I don't know if he can get to the back of the eight here. I mean, the 14 doesn't really go, though, so it's kind of a hard one to shoot at. But if you felt good laying the cue ball behind the fort, the behind the eight ball, which is a pretty natural shot a lot of times, but I'm just gonna feather that ball again. Well, that helped the cause right there, because now he's got a few more balls that go in his pocket. Yeah. I think Darren needs to really remove the 7 and drop underneath that 12 and try and remove the 15 right now. And cause I don't think he's going to get the best of what's going on here. That's yeah. My, fe my feeling, anyways. I'm not for sure. I mean, this is touchy business right here. Just because you could give up a free one, but here in a few shots, something bad could develop, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, is he? It, I'm not sure what he's doing. Well, he was trying to go a little aggressive. Nothing wrong with that. But now the three is dead free, and that's what I was talking about a little while ago. I mean, not dead free, but pretty free. Yeah. <laughs> Just stun your ball over and go ahead and get on out because none of the banks go, right? Right. The nine's covering the 15 a little bit, plus all those five balls below the spot. Big shot. Looks good. Looks pretty darn good. Yeah, great yeah. hit there. Yeah, he had to make a great shot, but when you don't have balls on your side, side mark, you got to be real careful when you're moving a bunch of them. Like you got to know something's getting over there, right? Mm hmm. I wouldn't get tricky here. Just start with the 10 and go from there. The 9 goes. Oh. Uh. Uh, he's giving up a shot on the five. We'll see what he can do with it. Not much, it doesn't look like. Mm -mm. No, actually playing the five here and things get worse. Yeah. Quite often. Yeah, but he could rearrange them a little bit if he wanted. He's just going to play the 15 over. Oh, the 15 goes to the seven? Oh, you got to shoot this. Oh, he couldn't get to it. Never mind. So Josh got to leave that miss behind. dangerous where's he going with this ball into the five i think yeah but i mean 11 banks if you do that he better make it 
So yeah, you got to pull on the reins here. This is the right shot. Follow through to the pocket lightly. Protecting the 15. Now Josh can pretty freely drop off the 9, the 12, 13 doesn't bank. Of course, you want us to kind of see where you're putting the cue ball just to make sure, but looks pretty free. This is that same predicament. Uh, Darren's got to be careful he didn't sell out a bank here. If he moves one of those two balls down there, the 13 or the 12. Just taking a foul. That's yeah. how powerful it was. Yeah, good thing he got him snuggled up on that ball, though, because, again, when you don't have much on your side and you bring the cue ball up off the rail, right? Right. You're giving him a chance to – Put you in a little bit of a spot up table, maybe. Not sure what. Man, this is dangerous here. I know he doesn't have a lot of choices, but it's a nice shot. And I think this is more like the first game. I thought Josh might try and lead in this direction, mm -hmm. keeping it real simple. Let's see what what happens. Taryn pushed the envelope a moment ago and gave Josh a nice shot on the three. And oh, that's two fouls there. Interesting. Now he owes three, so he's desperately not wanting to send the balls up table with Josh just having one, you know, two balls. I know it's negative three, but he only has two. And really, th the problem is the balls lay better for Josh to do this th than it does Darren as far as stay aggressive is what I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, Josh has more of the balls on his side. That's pretty nice speed. Yeah, and now Darren's got to come off a ball and protect against all kinds of banks on the 12-5. So really kind of worked against himself, I think, here, just because of the position of the balls. And it's kind of like backgammon a little bit. You know mm -hmm. anything about backgammon? You know, you, you got to read the table, right? Because when they offer you the cube, you got to be able to evaluate, you know, am I that big an underdog the way the balls lay? And it's kind of the same thing in one pocket. If the balls lay bad for you, you don't want to be the aggressor too often. Like, this is difficult. He needs to get underneath the 15 somehow. Maybe off the 1. He can go by the 11 and come up. As soon as he gets past the 11, he's okay. So go off the 1 between the 15 and 11 with the cue ball. Just You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. glance off of it. Yeah. And then just use your touch to, to – well, he's doing something else now. Wow, look at this touch. But again, you can't predict one's going to get near your pocket, and now Josh may have a shot at the eight. Well, he's definitely got some kind of shot at the eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's shooting anything else but the eight. And I'll tell you one thing, you know, and you I don't know if you've played in the one pocket here even years ago, Mark. But when you play a grueling one-pocket set like he did last set against Evan Lunda, yeah, you can very easily kind of come in kind of yeah, a little rope-a-dope. Uh, he's giving up the four. And this is where Josh should have been a little bit more realizing, oh, I got the best of it here. Yeah. Why, why take this chance, especially against a guy that can pocket the ball real well? All right, so Daz was looking to see if he could follow his ball down for easy shape, like down to the bottom rail, because he will hit before the side instead of trying to elevate and hold for the 13. Oh, he eased it. So where is he getting shape at? The combo? The 12-5? Mm. It looks a little tight, but he's going to shoot it. I don't know. 
Oh, the, oh, I see. I kind of thought he could have played position to bank the 10 back in his pocket and pin it to the 14 there. Well, but if he wanted to let a stroke out, he comes down for the one right there. But he liked the combo. Okay. Whew. Yeah. That looked uh, pretty scary. and Could have got ugly. Yeah. And so he's going to get even here with the 12 and could really do about five or six more balls damage maybe if he gets right on this first 13. Yeah. He's gotten a little little bit of a cut. So hard to kill it on this slick table. Man, the problem was Darren was close to that ball, so he was a little worried. He'd love to have a little less angle right here. Then he can get nice and heavy on the 13. I think now he's looking at going three rails if the seven goes, maybe up by the side pocket. Yeah, I think that's what he's doing. Yeah, got to not catch the 14. Oh, this hurts. This hurts. Now, if he hits a high ball, it looks like he goes right into the 11, huh? Well, yeah. Yeah, it sure does. And I don't think you can be cute and try to stun to the end rail here. Yeah, by the, the 11, 11, huh? Yeah. Uh -uh. There's not much room there. Yeah, so yeah. he just wanted to pull that a little deeper underneath that, up that side rail and just. While the stun shot might work, it depends on how that 13 hits the pocket. And we're at range here where you can't be cute playing to a side of the pocket yeah I'd, i think if i was going to shoot it that's what i'd do though you know might, might oh. as well try to get into the eight because if you hit it with a high ball and you miss you're probably going to sell out anyways you know and, so and the high ball can scratch too you don't yeah off the 11 yeah yeah, yeah. so he kind of took it in his own hands there he had yeah. to hit a great shot but he, he he came with it and now should cut the 11 three balls will be coming on the spot and darren's gotten to where they they both have two. So I don't know if he gets shape. He may hit the top of the eight. We'll see. No. So decisions, decisions with the 15 there. Yeah. With three balls coming on the spot. Uh, yeah, it's hard to really protect the cue ball away from banks, whether it be on the 15 maybe or, or the ball in the low part of the spot. If you bank softly with follow, you can get it where it's an off angle so it's not a stop shot bank on that uh, the group of three that will go up there if you miss. Or if you pin it there, then he's got more of that full hit bank. I think he's just going to play a light speed and make sure it's over the hole if he doesn't make it. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. okay. And then now see how he let the cue ball come away from the cushion so it's at least he's got a back cut so he can't just stop the cue ball. Yeah, he may have a kiss draw. as well. May have a kiss. But you've kind of forced him to shoot, too. Well, that looks very kissish. Like uh, maybe he can stun the ball and make the bank. But it's close to kissing. Because, I mean, you can make mm -hmm. the bank a few ways, but mm -hmm. it looks like with top English, he's kissing the ball. Maybe he could bend it with right English and get around it. He might overcut this, too, trying to avoid the kiss. No, he didn't. Oh, he's had to stun it. You see how he kind of drew yeah, stun it? Yeah, what a nice yeah. shot. And what a nice shot. Yeah, he had to come with one, but also Darren. You know, of course, Darren, I mean, he, he makes that bank over half the time probably, so hard not to shoot at it. Ooh, this is going to get tricky. At least a little bit. I'll tell you, if the 13 was definitely open a little more, you think he'd be tempted with the with that bank? I think I he do. might be. Yeah. He's going to have to back cut it if he wants to play it. Yeah, but it'll spread nicely. Yep. I mean, no, no question. He's definitely examining it. He knows he's going to get the worst of it if he just concedes the 15. Yeah, and I mean, you can come up with the cue ball to where the 11 is, is a, a little funny, right? Uh, on banking, maybe even not bankable, but he's now that's what he's got to do. All right, do I need to draw this up the rail, you know, and make this kind of like a kiss, or what do I need to do here to not give him a bank? But you cannot blame him shooting at this, in my opinion. All right. 
So now Roberts with a four to three lead in ball count. <laughs> Not the easiest to get from the 15 to the 11. Very doable, though. You wouldn't, I mean, it's got a little bit of a big pocket on the combo with the 11 15. So. Got to hit it good. Yeah, just ignore the 15 and just cut the ball in. That's I like doing that. Yeah, just too much to work with there. A little bit of a friendly bump for Josh. Yeah. Uh, because if he can cue this ball, he probably maybe gets around on the eight. I don't think he takes a chance cutting the eight. Do you, Mark? Right no. Here? No, I don't think so either. Oh, you're taking a look at it. Well, I'll tell you, he passed up a, on an eight ball, and I just got to ask him about it. Now, he might not remember because I don't think he saw the shot, to be honest with you. You know when you play one pocket, it's easy to, like, overlook something. I mean, I say easy. It doesn't happen very often, but you can do it. We've all done it. Yeah, I've had balls straight in my pocket and, yeah. and shot defense. Like, what was I even – and somebody says, why didn't you shoot that? And yeah, they always tell you, by the way. For <laughs> afterwards. <sure. Yeah. laughs> Just to make sure you feel real dumb. Okay, they're checking the ball score there, Darren, with a bit of a concerned look. And Unless he's worried about missing that ball or something. Uh, that being the 11, he must have a full pocket here. Key to this one is don't baby it. Yeah, I don't understand why. I understand why because he didn't want to, you know, dislodge the balls from his pocket, right? But you're going to make it a little more often if you're going to shoot it a little bit. But the problem is he's going to give up two probably, maybe even three if Josh gets an angle. Uh, that's light. Yeah, you know, it's nice to get that angle to come across for yeah. the short side on the 11, yeah. right? But you yeah. can't take a chance at not getting on the six. You got to, if I get too straight, I just get too straight and I do something yeah. with those balls. But That's a good point. The thing is now, though, he can kick the eight out. That is one good thing. Right. Hit that a little light as, oh, well, okay, it came up. Nice shot. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> Josh has to be disappointed because he was always getting that ball. It was a hanger, so mm -hmm. uh, he didn't get anything from the hanger. That was just to save Darren an inning from knocking that ball in for him. Yeah, you can see they. Josh has a 5-4 to four lead here in ball count. You know... I guess, you know, you really don't want to move them balls. Um, you can take them both away pretty easily and stick the cue ball right there. And of course, you don't want to do that. You don't want to give up the six, though. But, you know, here's where if you know your man, he might not shoot the six. So he may make a mistake. I wondered oh about my. that. I oh wondered my. about that, if he was going to yeah. try to kick at that. And you could see why. Well, he expected to hit it way better than that. But that was, that was still... Even though 5-4, he's down, now 5-3. That was still pushing the envelope a little bit. And uh, probably a little lucky the 9 doesn't pass the 6 right here. Or else Josh may get on out. He may get out anyways. He's got to get on the 14. Now, the good thing is if he hits the 4, he should open the 10 when he comes across. Oh, he's overcut it. Oh, that's... And That's an the, egregious yeah, miss there. The eight because ball kisses in, I think, maybe. Yeah. But I don't know if you want to shoot it unless you feel like you can spin for shape. But Well, that's two open balls that Josh has missed in this game. And it's hard to beat someone like Appleton if you miss an open ball. It's hard to get enough turns against him, but when you do, you sure have to cash him in. It looks like the eight's a hanger, and it'd be hard for me because the cue ball is going to come up. You're going to get some type of bank. You know what I mean? Yes. yes so do. he doesn't have to make this bank combo. Now he's going to hang it, which was great. And he hung it on the point, so it makes the kick shot a lot tougher, meaning he could hit the outside of this and maybe not make the eight. Josh is going to make one nice kick shot here. Now the good thing is he can put a little more speed on it because even if he comes into the 11 a little bit, it should be fine. Oh, that angle looks so like he's maybe going a little long to me. That's, oh, man, what a great hit here. What a great hit here. Pressure moment. 
and the crowd deservingly claps. Huh. I don't think going underneath him here is a great deal. I think he needs to get down table. Yeah. Just the to lightly is, go into the rail here is not going to solve anything. But with other balls there, usually Josh can't take a chance at elevating and moving balls. So he'll do the same, and then maybe Dare doesn't like it now, but he'll like it in a moment to go down table. You know, Does that make any sense? Yeah. Like he'll improve his situation a little bit without yeah. the 11-4 getting moved away. Now the thing is you'll take a little chance that your opponent might move it away. Oh, he's trying to go into the back of the... Oh, that's dangerous. What is this? I don't understand this move right here. Really trying to get a lot out of it right there. And as as well as Darren may know the slick table, that's a touchy shot on this table, even more so than the ones out, you know, out in the arena. Well, <clears throat> Josh is not playing here, for right? three. I think he can draw, too. Yeah, you catch a lot of six. You. Yeah. Well, you got the four, you got the 14. Yeah, I guess a soft draw, but you may end up doubled up. It looks like to me with a high ball, you'll push the six and you'll go into the four with the cue ball and really hard not to get a shot, I think. But it's hard to tell what angle he has. I kind of like a high ball myself. Yeah, I like that. Push the six down. Really kind of hard not to mm -hmm. get a shot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, well, it's kind of tricky to get the next one, though, unless right. he's playing for a bank or he's powering up. Be careful you don't uh, pop the ball, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, what a nice strike that was. Very productive. Yeah, and looked very clean, too. You know, like a real nice strike on the cue ball. Two to one, Roberts. Yeah. These have been some hard fought matches here. <laughs> yeah, and long days. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is day seven, right? So long days here for these guys. and. You know, I don't know if you know it as well as I do. I know it only too well that when you play one pocket, you can play two hard-fought matches, and you're just really tired because of the brain. You know, uses the brain so much. Where I could play like a bunch of matches, nine ball, and be just fine. All right. Well, we got a short player timeout, and we will return momentarily. Okay, Darren Appleton will be breaking. Trailing two to one. Yeah. This is a race to three. Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones here. Yeah, and watch for that little, you know, five inch alley. Well, it looks like the ref has maybe asked him to re rack them. Maybe the rack's a little crooked. I'm sure it's unintentional, but I was going to say, watch for that little gap, that f about four or five inch gap like he had in his first break to where. Josh could get at that kick on the 15. A lot of times it can be frustrating because you feel like you're improving on the hit of the ball but not getting any much of a different outcome. So if the cue ball only gets about a diamond and a half up on that side rail, that's that's about the distance I'm talking about. You see this big old yeah. gap right here? Yep. Yeah. And so there you got to change things. You get you can't keep doing it. Maybe pull the cue ball out a little further, create a little thinner hit to make the cue ball run a little more when you hit those that head ball just a little bit and the other ball, the second ball. So Josh can be really aggressive here. You know, if he feels like he can move the pack some, he can shoot the five and stun one right behind the 15. Now the 15's pretty open, so you got to be careful with the cue ball. I like him just kicking the 15. And just get into the game a little bit. Mm-hmm. He seemed like he was wanting to bank the five at the 13 and drag the cue ball up by the one, but that's dangerous, too. Yeah, the nine's there. you got to go behind the 15 or into the 15, one of them. Oh, beauty on the cue ball. Really nice. Got a lot of balls on this side. That's going to it's gonna do a lot for him. And Darren should immediately kick behind the 13 here, one rail behind the three. Before, between the three and the side. I don't think he can really fool around here. This can get ugly quickly. <clears throat> Little light again. Little light. Not saying it's too terrible, but you don't want him 
you know, s- s- figuring out how to shoot at the three in some kind of manner <laughs> mm-hmm. and be able to put you behind the 15 now. He can go off the four. Oh, you got to go off the four here, Josh. Go to the rail and spin him up. You might really bury him here, and you might cut off the long rail kick with the four. Not kick at the 15. Well, it's not terrible, but you're going to leave him open where he can get you behind those balls, the 13 and all that. Yeah, you, you really understand? have to. You, yeah, know, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Unless you, like, that's taking a little chance, but the thing is he had some positives going, moving balls away from his opponent's pocket, right? Mm-hmm. But if he shoots through the four and puts the four up table, maybe blocking the kick and gets him behind the 15 right there, Darren's in the spot. Like, that's what Efren would do. Efren would course the best in the world of getting you behind the ball by your hole but this looks like he's banking the seven on the 13 maybe scrambling the balls he might be able to kick it to 14 that's, 11 here. that's close uh, i certainly wouldn't blame him that's pretty on you can really do some damage if things turn out favorable from that well if you feel like you're making it you got to kick it you may not get shape, but if you feel like it's like, all right, I'm 100% making this right here. Well, don't you feel good about it where it's laying? Yeah, I do. I'm just trying to see for sure about shape. Okay, he's going to challenge. He knows the 13's not shootable the way the side pocket is. He thinks the 6 is a tough ball for Darren to be able to shoot at right here, which I agree. That's okay. Very it different. Yeah, it's hard for Darren to shoot at the six. Good speed. Good speed on the cue ball there, too, to get him on the rail. Or yeah, Darren's going to have to soft kick at the three here unless he wants to go aggressive and shoot at his pocket. He could cut the 13, I guess. But, I mean, you could try to get over to the side rail, but <laughs> good luck. I think it's just a soft kick on the three here, Mark. Really need to keep it simple. He tries to shoot off of a ball. I'm really seeing what that might be. So, see, it's and, tough. And, you know, it's really sensitive. Unless you're going somewhere else with the cue ball that I really don't see. I like the soft kick at the three, willing to take a foul even. Yes, yes, for sure. And a little problem if you miss hit it and the cue ball comes up a little bit, maybe you give up a long railer on the two. I don't know where he can draw the cue ball. Ooh, he's shooting. What's he shooting at, though? The five? The six? He's shooting the six to go into the eight. Likes his chances. Yeah, that was super tough, though. And again, like you've been commenting all week, really betting the game on it. And and to be honest with you, I mean, you figure him to get shape, but he didn't have to. All right, he wants to get full on this three here. Yeah, that's it right there. He can draw out of it now without rubbing the 11. Well, um, he got shaped that time because he overcut the object ball, but it was going to be a lot tougher if he pockets that object ball to get the cue ball over there. You're talking about Darren. Yes. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Maybe he doesn't get shaped, and he's right. really betting a lot of the game there. Yeah. You can lose with that shot, but might not be able to win. Yeah, and the thing is, when you hit it well, okay, he's going to have to shoot the combo now which is fine, but when you hit it well, it looks like you have a path for the cue ball, but when you don't, and that may be even safe, when you don't, that path is kind of gone. And then the other part, it's a tough shot. You try to help make the path, and then that causes you to miss the ball even more. Yeah, you know? and it's another time, another thing that maybe Darren's got to think about is, did I have other options, Mark? You know what I mean? He could have kicked at that ball, that's for sure, and Josh not out of the woods because he got – he had a lot of places to go with the cue ball besides this rail. Hopefully, it doesn't cause him a miss. I don't think the 512 goes, or maybe it does. Like if he draws here, he's just going to try and hold. Right. In hindsight, he probably should have overshot that a little bit rather than allowed this to happen. Cause yeah, the 410 is playable from the middle of the table as well. Maybe he can stun forward. And oh, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, no, and the six looks shootable as well. Like, nah, maybe not. Maybe it's not dead. He's going to look at it, though. Can't blame him for that. Oh, my. Well, Daz can definitely cut cut in the 15. No question about that part of it. 
Yeah, and this part of it is another part that he must be doing well, running a lot of balls, right? Yeah. Being undefeated. Yep. And if the six goes, if, if oh, the boy. the six goes, this is not the guy you want trying to manage through getting nine balls here. Right. I mean, there's some other ones you don't want, but this is definitely one of them. Ooh, late in the day right there. That's a late in the day mistake. And what did I tell you about the 10 ball, Mark? When the guys add the extension and they put yeah. right English, right? What right. did he do? He threw the ball more, deflected the ball more. Gets into heavy. Into thick, right? Yep. Just like when they used inside, they overcut a few of the balls, right? Now for sure, for sure the six doesn't go. Yeah. <laughs> and now we know it won't. He's got to push through on the two. He's got a challenge here. I mean, it's only four to nothing, so, I mean, you could think otherwise, but Josh isn't shoot, <laughs> shooting the, the ten ball. you got to know mm -hmm. he's not shooting the ten. No way he's shooting the ten because that opens up everything for Darren. Yeah. So and push, nothing for him. Yeah, push through on the ten. You could even bank the 13, but I wouldn't want to leave the two myself. That, that, that ball goes to too many good places. Now here go all the way to the end rail. That's the most effective. Yeah, I like that. You want this ball to get hidden down there a little funny. Doesn't look like it's going to do it. But so Josh will kick behind this, I think. You looking at the kiss shot on the five? Well, I ain't going to lie, Mark. A lot of times when you get those two balls that are dead to one hole mm -hmm. around the spot, yeah, it goes the, the kiss other shot way too. is there too. And he's going behind the two. With a light speed. Wow, Josh Roberts is probably going to advance here. Just got to get up here on the 10. Hit a little gap. That's perfect, it looks like. You were right. Playing for two. And I don't think we're having another match tonight, Mark. I think we're going to carry into tomorrow, right? So I'm not sure that they've decided on a time. I'm sure they'll. Okay. Two matches. Yeah, two matches tomorrow. That's right. Now that everyone will suffer a loss, and we've heard it's 4 p.m. Eastern. Match ball. Yeah, and I'll give you a little Josh clue. Roberts. Fetter Gorst will be in that first match since he got the bye tonight. He can't get the bye tomorrow, huh, Mark? Then I guess they just draw between these two. For That's right. Who All right, well, a great match. Josh Roberts showed us how he got here. And this was another great edition of Elite Class Pool. Thank you for joining us. That's our time for this time. Until next time, so long.